Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to Tammy Talks. We are here tonight because we're going to get into Insecure Season 5, Episode 6, Tired, okay? Um, if you're brand new to my channel or if you are a repeat um, viewer that is not subscribed, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We are very close to getting to 1,500 subscribers. Can only do that with your help. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my um, future videos. So let's get right into it, y'all. I want to start off by saying Nathan showed us he is who we thought he was. I'm just going to put that out there. So the episode starts off with, um, it picks up kind of where it left off with Issa being at the hospital and seeing Lawrence Condola and baby Elijah. So Issa, as she's walking away, she actually walks back and tells them to wait. Condola and Lawrence both look nervous and kind of uncomfortable. And Issa's like, let's pretend like this isn't weird. You know what I mean? So she's looking down at the baby and she's like, oh my God, he is so cute. Condola asks him, asks um, Issa if she wants to hold the baby. Um, Issa's like, yeah, like she kind of looks to Lawrence first for like, and not like an approval, but kind of like, a, you know, are you cool with this? I don't want to overstep. So she looks to Lawrence first and Lawrence kind of accepts it. Issa gets the baby and she holds the baby. And next thing we know, Issa takes the baby and throws the baby like a basketball. And it's like, fuck the kid. Y'all. <laughs> Issa continually, like, we're not getting her really talking in the mirror as much, but these, like, daydreamy sequences, I feel like are, are just as good. So, we find that we, we know it's a dream. So, she's actually sitting in her apartment. She's scrolling through Instagram, and then she sees a picture of Lawrence and the baby. And we can just see her deflate yet again because she's really not over Lawrence, but she's, like, trying to push herself to be past Lawrence. So then we see that um, the next scene is Issa and Lawrence having sex. And she's trying, as we know, Issa told Lawrence last episode that she loves him. And he did not say it back. He didn't really acknowledge it, not even a thank you or anything. So while they're having sex, she's trying to get him to, to, to say that I love you. She's trying to like trick him into saying it. He doesn't, he doesn't fall for it. So she's just kind of like over it. They're laying down post-coital. And after that, um, word, to, word to rocks, because she says it all the time. So they're um, laying down um, afterwards. And again, Issa's like trying to get him to say it. And Nathan's not biting. He's just kind of like, I saw a man walking a coyote. Like that's where his mind is right now. So we see Nathan's at work. We know Nathan is a barber. He's doing, um, he finishes doing some guy's hair. And the man is like, I thought I was ugly till I started coming to get my hair cut by you. So we know that Nathan is a good barber. So there's a line of customers that are waiting and they're waiting on Suge to come in. Suge is late. Um, it seems like Suge is always late, but they kind of deal with it. They tolerate it because Suge is able to bring in um, celebrity clientele to them. So they're all talking about how he's always laid, how he eats everybody's food, like kind of like light banter with a little undertone of shade up in there. So um, one of these guys, like a lot of the guys keep mentioning he's 45 minutes late, like my appointment is now. So Nathan offers to take another, like to take one of the clients. Now I think everybody knows whether you are a barber or not, you do not take another person's client. I think we have seen this play on, on um, like, Black Ink Crew with the tattoos. We've seen this play out time and time again. You don't touch another, um, another, I want to say client. You don't take another barber's client. You just don't. It's very frowned upon. So, everybody's kind of looking at Nathan like, you're going to do that? Nathan was like, I'll take the heat. I'll do it. So, Issa's at the hospital passing up food to Molly's family. Molly is away at a retreat for work, 
and Issa is like helping her out, doing the, the good friend thing to do. And she's like, um, Molly apparently told her like what to get for each family member so that they're happy, they're comfortable, it's something that they like. So while she's doing that, Molly calls her and Issa's like, this is the third time you've called. I got it handled, whatever the case. So they go back and forth with a little banter. Molly again thanking Issa for helping out. And then um, we see one of Molly's brothers, Curtis, come over. And Issa's like, I got your food. Like, and it's like little playful, seamless. Like, I'm not even saying seamless. It is definitely like um, innocent, just flirty, just whatever. And Issa's like, my brother is married with a kid and he got herpes. <laughs> Issa's not about to mess with your brother. So we see Issa is working with her assistant and they are going to a boutique because they want to recruit them for an art walk by, was it Indian Water? And one of the, like, and initially the employees are, they're for it. They're all for it. They're like, okay, cool. This is going to be dope. One of them is like, don't I know you? And Issa, they were like, aren't you from the block? Issa was like, yes, we worked with Crenshaw, whatever. And immediately they were like, yeah. This might not work. This might not be the best fit. And Issa's like, oh, okay. And I think this is Issa now seeing that um, the way that Crenshaw has been blasting her, the way that he's like going in on her on social media, now it's starting to take effect, not just to like her reputation maybe, her social presence, but to her business as a whole. So they kind of tell her, you know, we'll get back to you. We'll holler at you, you know, when we decide what we want to do. So Molly is out at work with the people and she's like texting her brother about her mom. So it's Molly never quite tells them that she's like checking on family. So they think that she's just like super distracted. So she tells them, oh, I was about to just take some pictures of y'all. Y'all go ahead and pose. So Molly and the other new guy are newbies to the to the law firm, and they play this game called first impressions. And a lot of the lawyers are talking about how Molly um was like super bougie when she came. She's looking for like the the frappuccino machine and the frother and all this other stuff. And it turns into them being like, let's let's have some fun. If you're a lawyer, drink. So it turns into like, okay, now we're about to really relax, let loose, and have some fun. So we didn't see Molly waking up. It's like food all over the bed and shit. She's still dressed. Her shirt is half on, half off. Um, and she sees a watch in the bed with her, a man's watch. So she's kind of on some, oh shit, what did I do? So she goes downstairs, she's hungover, and she's getting ready to order breakfast, but she sees the rest of the group. So she walks over to them and she's like, so sorry I missed everything. I was late. Like last night got too crazy because they're all fully dressed, meaning that they showed up and went and did all the morning activities. If you have ever been to a retreat, it is activity after activity after session after session. <laughs> so Molly has like missed the morning, the morning session and they're like, it's fine. It was just a trust building situation. Don't even worry about it. So then Molly is like, so I got this watch. I found it in the hallway. Anybody knows who it is? And Torian is like, it's mine. And she said, oh, Lord. Kind of like, oh, shit. Did I really did I really sleep with you? And they, told, they show her a video of after some shots, Molly turned into the Molly that we know. And she's dancing and partying and jamming. But it's kind of like not the best look to do with your co-workers. You know what I mean? So she's like embarrassed. They don't seem to be like thinking anything of it. But she's like super, super embarrassed. So the next thing we see is Issa showing up to Krishan's workspace. Because Issa knows that I got to get this shit together. I have to figure out a way to get Crenshaw to like ease off of what he's doing because he's going to mess up her. He's going to mess up the brand of the, the blocks brand, which in turn is going to mess up her partnership with NDM, which in turn is going to mess up her being able to provide, you know, all these different activities and all this different stuff that she's trying to do for the community. So she comes in with some brown, 
Issa comes in with some brownies because, you know, Issa wouldn't be Issa if she wasn't super awkward. So she comes in with brownies as a peace offering. And Crenshaw looks at her and is like, girl. So this co-conversation really had me effed up. So Issa is telling him that she wants to clear the air. Let's clear the air. You said some stuff. I said some stuff. Krishan tells her that, yeah, he popped off on Instagram, but then she slid in his DMs saying some foul stuff. And I'm like, so what are you talking about? Like, my whole thing is, you can't be mad that you're out doing some foul shit. Now, the only thing I had on Crenshaw's side was he did say, you can't be mad that I'm still mad at you. That's that's valid. That's fair. But my whole thing is you're on here dogging her, dragging her because she, in your eyes, you feel that she wasn't really looking out for you the way that she should have, but like everything went off without a hitch. So my whole thing is, if you don't want to work with Issa anymore, just don't work with her anymore. But I don't like, I don't feel the need to like go on and blast her the way that Crenshaw is doing. Then for her to kind of gaslight Issa and make her feel like she's the one that was just completely, completely in the wrong with this, to me that was foul. So, Crenshaw said that Issa was more concerned about getting her bag than she was about um, his opportunity, and she needs to own her choices. On one hand, Issa was trying to protect herself um, and protect her partnership with the water company, but on the other hand, it's like, this is a business. You know what I mean? So, like, on that, on that part, that's the only part I do feel a little conflicted, like, okay... Issa was kind of foul in this aspect, but at the same time, it's like, no, she's doing what she is supposed to do. Krishan, you got the opportunity that you wanted. You were able to do your show. You, after lying to Issa, you did the show the way that you wanted to do it anyways, and everything went off without a hitch. So I don't understand, like, his animosity. I don't understand his plight. I don't understand why he's making such a big deal about this to the fact that you're content with ruining another black person's business when they're trying to do things around the community because they're not doing it the way that you would. And then he's like, shows her his new shirts that are labeled integrity. And I was like, Krisha, are you, I'm not like, right. I'm not, Kofi, I'm not feeling you, not feeling it. So then she comes into the shop. We're back with Nathan, back at the barbershop. And they're all settling out money and whatever. Oh, I think they're paying, like, booth rent. That's what it looked like they were doing. And um, Shug was like, Nathan got mine. And Nathan was like, what? And Chris Shaw was like, you got mine. I mean, you taking my clients and everything. And they're like, everybody's like, hold on, hold on. Let's not turn this into something that it does not have to be. And um, Suge is on some, I bring in all the famous people, I bring all the celebrities, I bring in, you know, majority of the high-end clientele, y'all should be thanking me. And I said, wow, okay, sir. So he tells them I was going to bring in Wu-Tang next week. We all was going to eat, but now I'm just going to, you know, do it myself and kind of on some the rest of y'all can sit and suffer. And I'm like, that's foul. That's foul as shit because you know that you were wrong for having clients wait that long. But I guess don't touch nobody's client, don't touch nobody's client. So everybody in the shop is kind of like, y'all chill, let's not even get into that. You do be on some foul shit, Shug. But now they're all salty because they thought they were going to cut Wu-Tang's hair. So Nathan... um. Nathan says something to him. I, I forgot what Nathan said. Nathan mumbles something, and Shook tells him he needs to worry about his own bipolar ass. And I said, wow. See, and that's why people that suffer from mental illness and have, you know, these conditions and different things that are going on in their lives don't, like, they don't want to share it. There's such a stigma attached to it. Nathan being open enough to tell these people that he has bipolarism, bipolarism, that he's handling it, he's maintaining it, he's dealing with it the best he can, the fact for you to take it and throw it into his face because you were wrong, Shug, that was foul. 
that was foul. And everybody knew it because everybody kind of looked at him like, bruh, I didn't like how the rest of the the rest of the um the shop didn't come to Nathan's defense. It's one thing if you want to call Nathan out because he took some of your clients, that's one thing, and that's perfectly fine. That's reasonable. Do that. But to turn on Nathan and make him feel a certain way and to throw his bipolarism in his face because you was on some bullshit, that's foul, Shook. Ugly ass. He really made me mad. So you can tell that Nathan is hurt, super gut punch to him, and he just kind of like lets it roll off. So we see Molly is getting ready to present at the retreat with Torian, and she, gets a, she sees a text message from her brother. And this is why when you go into that type of space, the phone should have been flipped over, should have been flipped down, face down, no other distractions. So Molly is seeing her brother text her, the, you know, his name pop up, and she's distracted and she starts to bomb the presentation. But Torian um, steps in and is able to, to save them from it um, and to make sure that, you know, everything goes smooth because it's his, like, his ass is on the line as well. So, Torian and Molly are out having drinks later, and Torian is like, so, my back hurts from having to carry the presentation. You, you like, I have never been able to show you up like that. What's going on? And Molly has to finally admit that she's distracted because her mother had a stroke, and she thought the text message was, some, like, an update from her brother, but it was really her brother asking her if she knew about the new Chick-fil-A. <laughs> If she knew about the new Chick-fil-A in a certain neighborhood. And Torian is like, wait, so you've been dealing with all of this while, you know, working and doing this project? And Molly's like, yes. And he just kind of reminds her, like, we are all a family. We're, we're co-workers, but we're also here for each other. And he says that he went through something similar where he had something major like that going on. And he was working through it and how, how hard it was for him and it's just kind of like, I got you. You know, you don't have to go through this all alone. Lean on us when you need to. On top of the fact, you could have told me and I could have helped, you know, Torian could have put more put more of the weight for the presentation they had to do together. So Molly is like super relieved to have gotten that off of her chest. And it's like you can almost see a weight just just come off her shoulders with it. So we see Issa's at a food truck. She's ordering some food. And when she turns around, Condola is there. <laughs> and Condola was like, oh, we have the same taste. And I said, I, I know this better be a, um, I said, I know this better be a dream. Condola got some balls on her today. But Condola um, then says that she, is, she thanks Issa for pushing Lawrence towards her because now Lawrence has moved back to LA. They're together. He has a new job where he makes a billion dollars a month. And then he like drop, she like drop kicks Issa and tells her to own her choices. So the theme of this episode clearly is Issa needing to own the choices she has made. You chose to do, you chose to try to um control what Crenshaw did and take the side of the water company in that in that aspect. You chose to broke up to break up with Lawrence because you can't deal with him having a child. You chose to get back with Nathan. So it's it's a series of choices that Issa has to deal with. And it seems like everything is just like closing in on her right now. So Curtis um FaceTimes Molly. And she's sitting in her hotel room, and her mom is awake. And I was like, who Jesus. So her mom is awake, and um, she's not able to talk, but she is able to, like, kind of wave. She's at least somewhat coherent. So uh, Molly is, like, so relieved, and you can see the tears, like, welling in her eyes. So she's trying to, um, she, like, tells her mom, I love you, I miss you. I'm glad you're feeling better, whatever, whatever. And his his her brother tells her she can't talk to you yet, but her eyes are saying that you are still a disappointment. And I'm like, that is such an older brother type shit to do. Cause that's something that my brother would do. So Molly is like, I can leave early if you guys need me to come, because their mom's gonna be released home. And her brother was like, We got it. 
There's no need to rush back. We'll see you when you get home. Like, don't even trip. Don't even rush back. We have everything taken care of. And it just kind of shows that, Molly, you don't always have to be in control of everything. There are some times, there are some things where you're not able, you're not going to be able to control and you have to be okay with that. And I think Molly is starting to finally learn that. So Torian knocks on the door and tells her that um, the partners have like a swag bag from the weekend and she wanted to make sure that she got one. She opens the door, hugs him and it's like, my mom is awake now. She's doing better. She's going to be released home. They have a moment where they like eyes and I said, they're going to end up doing something before the end of the season. Do I want Molly with Torian? I don't know. I, I, I don't know just yet, but something's going to happen between the two of them before the end of the season. So then Nathan and Issa. Um, Issa is at Nathan's apartment, so the food she was picking up was for both of them. And they talk about how Molly's mom is now awake, and they, um, she said that she saw the man, and he's definitely walking the coyote. And then Nathan just tell, like blurts out that he might quit the barbershop because he said he can't trust anyone, and L.A. might not be right for him. And Issa is like, oh, so that's what it is. It's L.A. And Nathan was like, what are you even talking about? So Issa brings up the fact that she told him that she loved him. And she said, you didn't even acknowledge it. You didn't say it back. You didn't say anything about it. So Nathan is just like, he grabs his food and it's just like, you tripping. Here you go again. And I'm like, here, what goes again? What's going on, Nathan? Because I feel like this is a very valid conversation. So... Issa is like, you think I'm making a big deal out of something, but you, you're you thinking of moving to L.A. and, like, that's going to affect me. So Nathan comes back at her and it's like, you didn't even ask what's going on with me. And I was like, oh. Like, she she didn't. So Issa is, um, like, Issa is like, I just really want to know what's going on with us. What is the issue? And then Nathan is like, you're super inconsistent. One minute you're crying in my mouth. The next minute you're telling me you love me. Like, you're the one that's super inconsistent. So, you tell me what's good. So, Issa just kind of like, well, let's just drop it. Nathan is like, cool. And he turns on the TV. But see, I think Nathan is just falling back into his trap of, or like this this mode for him where when things get rough, he turns and leaves. Because why would you quit the barbershop? Check Shug's ass about talking to you and about throwing your, your mental illness in your face and then be done with that. But you leaving the shop is it's it's proving Shug right. It's gonna prove everybody right that you when stuff does get rough or when stuff gets tough for you, that you do up and leave and you don't really stay and try to stick to and st try to stick stuff out. So then Issa is just sitting there and you can tell that she's wondering if she made the right choice by being with Nathan. Should she have told Nathan that she loved him? Does Issa really even love Nathan? I don't think she does. I think it was just something she said in jest. I think she got caught up in the moment and it just came out. But I am Tammy. Um, let me know how you guys felt about the episode down below. The episodes are getting better. Little by little, this season is coming together. Um, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, and I will catch you guys in the next one.